हेलो गुड इवनिंग गाइस सो वेलकम एवरीवन हैप्पी सैटरडे आई होप यू हैड एन अमेजिंग सैटरडे आई होप यू आर एंजॉयिंग योर सैटरडे राइट सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वन ऑफ द मोस्ट रिक्वेस्टेड वीडियो अबाउट द हैंडलिंग इम्बैलेंस डेटा सेट वेर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट मेनी थिंग्स एज सच सो यू विल प्रॉबली लाइक दिस all together and a lot of discussion will actually happen you know with respect to all these things so let's see how it goes ahead and then we will probably be discussing many things as such okay just give me some time so that we will start okay हेलो 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 ईद मुबारक गाइज ईद मुबारक ओके सो प्लीज डू समथिंग ऑन हेल्थ केयर प्रोजेक्ट्स एंड टू एंड आई हैव ऑलरेडी डन राइट सो मेनी सेवेंथ हेल्थ केयर प्रोजेक्ट्स वाज गिवन किसल सुमन राम राम कृष में आ गया वेलकम वेलकम किसल सुमन प्लीज यूज पी आर कव आर ओ सी डज नॉट वर्क फॉर इम्बैलेंस डेटा सेट नो वील ट्राई टू सी हाउ टू हैंडल the imbalanced data set uh, i'm just not talking about metrics we'll be discussing about other things also pr curve will be one of the thing that we'll be discussing uh, let's start uh, probably in another 2 minutes we'll start okay guys and uh, right now i'm going to do with respect to machine learning and probably in tomorrow's session we'll also understand how to do with deep learning like with pytorch tensor flow and uh, and other things right okay one thing that you want to you have to do is that guys just go to your anaconda prompt okay go to your anaconda prompt and probably install one of the yes we will be discussing about smote also okay so uh, what we have to do is that basically uh first of all i'll just activate my environment okay i really want you all to please install a library which is called as imb im learn okay so this this library you have to do it im learn im learn pip install i think im learn im imbalanced imbalanced uh, dash learn this particular uh, library you have to install because here i'm actually going to take this uh yes you can jaising you can join the i neuron course also not a problem so just try to install this library okay <coughs> so we will probably be installing this okay we'll be discussing about up sampling down sampling we'll be discussing about smort uh, different types types of smort and many things that will come if you have any specific request uh, if you if you want to see any ensemble techniques also we will try to discuss all those things okay don't worry yeah don't worry about it so uh over here what we are actually going to do guys and before we go ahead please do hit the like button if you are new so that i come to know that many people are interested in this particular session i really don't want to see uh, dull faces or dull uh, if you are not giving likes so that basically means it will also not motivate me much so yes uh, yeah uh, isolation forest also let's see how much we will complete in one hour session if something is remaining we'll continue that in tomorrow's session also So first of all you just go and write pip install imbalanced learn because this is the library that we are going to use and you can see over here requirement is already satisfied okay now the next thing is basically what we are have to do is that you know oh just a second guys okay so what what we are going to do is basically that uh the type of data set that we are going to use is credit card fraud detection i guess this is the right data set that you should use because again this particular data set okay 
I'm just going to write Kaggle. Please download this particular data set, guys. This data set is the most important thing. Okay. Uh, so this particular data set is just 143.4384 MB. You can uh, you can basically download this particular data set from here. Okay. So here you can actually download it. Okay. And from here you can actually download and you can actually see to it. Okay. Now, once you download it, just try to put it in the same working location where you are working in. And I'm just going to read this particular data set. Uh, the data set uh, before that, I'm just going to import pandas as pd pd dot read underscore csp. Okay, and uh, probably it is the name of credit card dot csv. I'm just going to use this df. And if I go and see my df dot head, I'm actually going to see the data set, which is from reading from the credit card dot CSV file. And it has huge number of records. So if I go and see my df dot shape, Swati Jha already, I've made so many videos on sentiment analysis. Please check my natural language playlist. Okay. So uh, import panda the speedy this 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 is there df dot shape okay now one thing that I really want to discuss over here uh, is that uh, first of all I will just try to see whether there is any null values so that if there is any null values I'll just drop it okay so dot sum instead of dot sum okay everything is zero over here you can see over here right you can also do dot count probably I think it'll work fine. So this is the count of the records all are same. Okay. So I think there is no null values. That is very good. So what I'm going to do next is that I'm also going to check my dependent feature output values. So my dependent feature over here is basically class. You will be able to see that there will be a feature called as class. And since this is a classification problem, uh, we need to find out uh, from the data set of credit card, you know, whether it is a fraud detection fraud or not whether this particular transaction is fraud or not. So for that, we will be taking this class. Now inside this class, you can see that I will just write dot value underscore count so that it will help me to understand how many number of zeros and ones are there. Okay. If this is not giving us, okay, sorry, it is value, value underscore counts. Okay. Now here you can see that zeros are actually present more than 2,84,000 records and fraudulent transaction is somewhere around 492. So this is, a very very huge difference right guys isn't not a very very huge difference right so uh, what i am actually going to do um uh, okay so swati just says to wait okay please share the data set just go over here guys uh, the link is here i'll be giving you the link of the data set in the youtube uh, chat itself just go and download this data set guys. Right, just go and download this particular data set and just download it. Just click, just go into this particular page. Just download it from here. Okay. First of all, you need to log in into the Kaggle. Okay. I cannot put this particular data set into the GitHub. So uh, what I'm doing is that I'm basically uh, giving this. Okay. So please uh, make sure that you download the data set from here. And this particular data set only we are going to explore. Okay. Again, I'm going to ping it. So just give me a go ahead. Once you download the data set, I'm extremely sorry. I did not wait for you all. Uh, up sampling, down sampling, smoting, which one is used and when? Yes, we will be discussing. Okay. We will be discussing about all these things. So don't worry. I'll also show you one ensemble technique and uh, other techniques also. It will be pretty much amazing. Okay. So just give me a go ahead once you are able to download the data center and once you are able to run this all code guys, please do let me know. Okay, I'll wait till then. See guys, I did not want to prepare the materials and give it to you beforehand. Instead, I want you all to practice along with me. That way your learning will be becoming very, very much good. Yeah, outlier also I'll take uh, probably in the upcoming classes, how to handle outliers and all. Okay, don't worry about it. Please show us resampling setting. Resampling technique is just randomly picking up some data, you know. 
please do a session for her handling outliers probably tomorrow session i will try to do outliers don't worry guys everything will be uploaded just request outliers is there i've already made outliers in my videos in my channel itself you can see that also otherwise i'll make a video live session on that too feature importance i made right that day so please do some on pca yeah let's focus on today's guys and then probably i'll be taking more request okay okay guys so have you done it have have you done okay perf perfect many people are saying they have done okay let's let's go okay so guys over here what i have done is that i have actually seen df of class dot value underscore counts and here you can see that they are record records like 2 lakh 84000 and 492 records okay now when you have this many records so what what will happen is that when you have this many records obviously this is not completely balanced right there is a huge difference there is a huge difference between these two so we will try to see how we can actually solve this particular way and again guys there are many ways as such you know just not a single way itself the first way that i am actually going to perform and as you all know because many people are actually saying uh, is under sampling okay so we are actually going to perform under sampling and remember guys uh, before this uh, let me just create my let me let me just create my x and y so my x will now be df dot drop i will drop only the column that is class okay and with axis is equal to one similarly my y column okay will be just having the class value okay so here what i'm doing i'm just dividing this all features into independent and dependent features so let me just write down the comment over here so independent and dependent features right perfect now we have actually done this okay now this is pretty much good now what we are going to do is that guys first of all i i really want to do something into this the, that is basically I'll, I'll try to apply some kind of algorithm so that let's see how it will perform in this kind of data set so once i execute this this is my line that has got executed now i'll just make some records below okay so that i do some things now let's apply a simple algorithm which is called as random forest i'm not doing anything guys you see one thing about uh imbalanced data set they say that uh imbalanced data set does not heavily impact uh ensemble techniques or where decision trees are actually used okay so let's see whether that works well or not otherwise we have to verify I, I really want to specify something now right now i'm not doing anything for this particular data set i'm just going to import the random forest classifier and i i really want to apply random forest classifier or do you want something else you can also let me know but uh, in, instead of random forest classifier okay leave about this also we'll try to just import uh, uh, logistic regression okay the most basic model so i'm just going to import the logistic regression everybody just do this okay so after importing logistic regression i'm also going to uh, obviously because one thing that you should always know guys during imbalanced data set do not check just the accuracy okay so anyhow i will be i will be importing i will be importing all the libraries like uh, accuracy score or uh, confusion matrix or uh, one more is classification report right so i'm just going to import all these things because i really want to check how it will perform then uh, what i'm also planning to do is that i'll try to also do cross validation because cross validation is also one of the way which actually helps you to handle uh, the imbalanced data set you know cross validation because your model will be tra trained on sample of data sets right like based on the cross validation value that you are actually giving or the splits value that you are actually giving so what i'm actually going to do is that over here simple is that i'll just write uh, from sklearn dot uh, model selection i'm going to import the k fold suppose i really want to perform the k fold over here i will also require numpy so i'll be importing numpy now once i import all these particular libraries guys these are some libraries that i'll be using now let's go and implement the logistic regression right and one more thing i missed over here is that i'll also try to perform grid search cv so that i probably don't miss anything as such so uh, grid search cv is actually present in model selection i guess so it will be inside model selection import grid search cv okay so just execute all these particular libraries because i'm going to use this after that i'll also try to check in 
you know different different uh, uh ensemble techniques like decision tree again i'm telling you decision tree is one simple one right i'll use random forest that is the ensemble techniques of this okay so let's let's go ahead and try to do this okay uh, the next next step what i'm actually going to do is that quickly just give me a go ahead guys once you are able to do this okay now i will just try to initialize a logarithmic classifier so i'll write log class this is basically my classifier okay i will initialize the logistic regression okay this is what i actually require for my classification problem statement and apart from this guys uh, i'll also try to do some kind of cross validation so because of that i will create some hyperparameter tuning right so hyperparameter tuning in logistic regression if you go and see guys you have values like this uh, c penalty the c value is there which is a kind of hyperparameter okay so first i'm going to give some c hyperparameter i'll i'll be saying that okay the c value will be ranging between uh, 10 multiplied by or 10 to the power of uh, i can also write 10 to the power of suppose i write like this np dot arrange okay and here i'm actually going to give the value between minus 2 to 3 or you can also give till minus 3 to plus 3 okay uh, now if you don't know what this is uh, just simple way if you want to really execute and see what this will actually give you this will just give you different different values okay a 10 point np dot arrange i think there's some mistake um, integers to negative integers powers are not allowed yeah sorry i missed giving this as a floating value itself so i think this will work okay so now here what we are doing is that the c value is getting i'm giving a list of values so that i can actually perform the hyperparameter tuning this is like 10 to the power of minus 2 10 to the power of minus 1 10 to the power of 0 right 10 to the power of 1 10 to the power of 2 right something like that so that is what i'm actually trying to do over here right so this is basically giving c different different value the next hyperparameter that i can play with is basically my penalty key so i'm actually going to give my penalty key uh, and by default if you go and see in logistic regression the penalty key this is just like a regularization is given as l2 right so i in penalty you can also have values like l1 okay so here I'm actually going to specify as L1 comma L2. So if you don't know about logistic regression, just go and have a look onto my video guys. But these are all the kind of hyperparameters that we can actually apply. Now we can still apply more hyperparameters, but I really want to check just because of the hyperparameters will be, will there be any kind of impact on the model uh, on the imbalanced data set, whether I'll be able to perform well. That is what I'm actually trying to test over here. Then uh, I'll be using a cross validation of K fold. And inside the K fold, if you go and see the parameter, you have parameters like n splits. So here, by default, I'll be taking uh, n splits. Uh, n splits is equal to five, right? And uh, all the other parameters. Uh, first of all, let me just take. Uh, there is also a very important parameter which is called a shuffle. Here, I will keep the shuffle as false. Okay. Here, I'll keep the shuffle as false because I don't want to shuffle after each cross validation. So these are the two values that I'm actually taken. If you also want to specify a random state, you can actually specify. So here I'm actually going to specify the random state as none. So these are my cross validation parameters with respect to K folds. Uh, here I've actually taken n underscore splits is equal to five random state as none and shuffle is equal to false. So all these particular parameters have been taken. Now, once I execute this, now it is the time that I run the grid search CV. And I have also imported the grid search CV. I have the cross validation. I have the grid, grid search parameters. So everything is there. Let's me, let me run this, okay? So I'll write CLF is equal to grid search CV, okay? And here I'm actually going to take my lock class, okay? And then the second parameter is basically my grid parameter, which I'm actually giving. Okay, if you if you go and see, there'll be something called as param, param grid, right? This param grid is basically given as my grid parameter. Okay, then my CV value is equal to this CV, what I have actually initialized. Okay, sorry, uh, CV, this CV, whatever I've initialized as a K fold. And I can also use n underscore jobs is equal to minus one. And probably I can also use a scoring parameter. In the scoring parameter, again, you can use accuracy, you can use other things. Let me try a different scoring parameter, okay? And that scoring parameter name, I can put it as F1 underscore macro, okay? These all are fixed, okay? 
if you want to really see just go press shift tab what are the all other scoring parameters you will be able to see inside this okay so just explore this whole documentation you'll be able to understand so uh, i've done this let me just execute it and after this i will write clf dot fit on x train or oh, did i do train test split let me see whether i did train test split or not no i did not do train test split so before this let me do a train test split okay so for train test split what i am actually going to do guys i am just going to import the train test split so from sk learn dot model selection okay import train test split okay and then i'm actually saying x train comma x test comma y train comma y test is equal to train test split and here i'm actually going to give my x comma y and here i'm actually also going to set my train size as 70 percent suppose i think 70 percent is sufficient right so now i've got my x train x test and what's my uh y train and y test and now i'll be doing the fit on my right x train and y train after this uh i will just run this so that you know let's see after that when we do the prediction how much we actually get with respect to this particular classifier right now i have not applied any sampling techniques okay so this is probably running guys we'll wait for this fit statement till it runs and then we will see what all we will be getting okay f1 macro is a scoring parameter like how we have accuracy and all you can also use accuracy f1 macro n underscore jobs is equal to one uses all the all uh, it, it it actually uses all the cores of your computer what is f1 underscore macro again i'm telling you f1 underscore macro is a scoring parameter okay please go a little bit top tell me the line number guys what is the use of cv parameter in grid search cv so this cv is nothing but cross validation okay the cross validation that we have applied is a kind of k fold cross validation with splits as five so you, your basics should be right guys and this all kind of videos i have already uploaded what is cross validation what are the different types of cross validation what is stratified cross validation what is penalty sir penalty is basically a parameter in logistic regression which is used for hyperparameter tuning you can see over here penalty the values will be either l1 l2 or l1 uh, okay f1 underscore weighted versus f1 underscore micro guys simple it is see i will i'll be, i'll search in front of you okay which one should be used now here you can see that a macro average will compute the metric independently for each class and then take the average and treating all the classes equally okay a macro average whereas a micro average okay micro average will aggregate this one this one is there but if i consider this f1 weighted we should be using it for a kind of uh, you know imbalanced data set i can say okay manish aryan l1 versus l2 penalty what's the difference so you have to go and check my regularization uh, fun, uh videos in my youtube channel guys those are the regularization parameters and yet i have not used anything right now okay i've just created my model why are you using logistic regression? Because it is a classification problem. I started with the most basic algorithm that is logistic regression. Okay. Shall I go ahead? Uh, Arvind Uday Shankar says, can you host another live session where we can clear our doubts like web development and DS? Yeah. If we directly give CV is equal to five, yes, you can give, 
but that will not be a k fold cross validation there is a difference between k fold cross validation and the other validations right see k fold cross validation we have actually created here show me the last code last code is this one only Does imbalanced data set affect logic regression? Yes, you go see see this, right? Now I have done this, guys. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to use CLF dot predict on Y test. Sorry. I'm going to do the prediction on X test. This will actually be my Y pred. Okay. Jupyter extension, which is Jupyter extension default, whatever Jupyter extension I'm actually getting over here. That is only what I'm using. Nothing as special as such, you know. Okay, guys. So after this, I'm just going to print my classification report. So uh, let's let's first of all print my confusion matrix. Okay. And inside this, I will give my Y test comma Y underscore pred. And then I'm going to print. Uh, what should I print accuracy score child accuracy score and always remember for imbalanced data set if you are getting a better accuracy think that there is something wrong okay always do not believe on to that okay whether you are getting good accuracy if your accuracy score is high that does not mean that your model is good so you have to look on to other features like precision recall other performance metrics okay so accuracy score I have actually imp imported and then I will also be importing classification reports and here I'm actually going to take Y test comma Y underscore pride. So I'm printing all these things and here you can see that uh, it has done a pretty decent job. Now when you say accuracy is 99% okay now why it has been coming as 99% you know <laughs> just understand it's a simple thing right the number of ones and zeros are very very uh, the number of ones are very very less right so because of that you see that this kind of predictions and this kind of prediction this is just like zero zero right this is just like zero zero this is like one one now because of this hyperparameter tuning and the cross validations you can see that we are at least able to get some good pretty number of this one when i consider the false positive and false negative i can definitely reduce this so one technique that i always say you know is with respect to the thing is cross validation i'll just write it down over here cross validation like k fold like k fold and and hyperparameter tuning so this is definitely the first technique which i'd like to specify if you want to really perform some kind of work with respect to the imbalanced data set i know see there are definitely wrong number of results but if i go and see the precision and recall it is ranging between 69 72 with respect to the number one number one is basically uh, the fraudulent information but yes it is being able to uh, give us somewhere around 70 to 72 percent okay uh, similarly what i'll do is that uh, let me just use some other model okay so i hope everybody is done till here can i get a quick yes so how do we know my data is imbalanced see guys if whenever the number of zeros and ones if there is a ratio difference like if if suppose this is 100 and this is like 400 or 500 at that time you can actually say that it it is just a ratio is somewhere around 25 percent right so you can see that number of ones is very very less when compared to this number of zeros okay so uh, let me try with sklearn so probably you can also do that so i'll write from sklearn dot ensemble i'm going to import a random forest classifier okay so here i'm actually going to take the classifier and probably we say that decision tree plays a important role okay <laughs> plays a, it, it it usually forms a hierarchical structure with respect to imbalanced data set so it, it gives us very good accuracy i'm not sure about that let's see let's let's try it in front of you this is an ensemble techniques we have multiple decision trees okay so here uh, i'm going to initialize okay i'm not going to perform any kind of hyperparameter tuning if you want to perform you can definitely perform so that i wanted to give you an example 
of hyperparameter tuning. So I've done this fit and probably I will run this all lines of code again. I'll uh, insert a cell below. So, uh, you have to make 60 and 40 percent ratio. Is it balanced data? Yes, 60 to 40 is balanced. Okay. So here I'm going just going to make it as classifier. Okay, the training is going on. You can see over there. We'll wait for some time till the fit happens and it is happening actually on a huge number of records. So uh, more than two lakhs, I guess. If you take 70 percent of 2 lakh 80,000 will be somewhere that much only, I guess. So do we scale model as the data is imbalanced and accuracy is 19, 99%? See, that only I'm telling you, no, don't focus on the accuracy. You should focus on precision and recall. You should try to see that how I can increase these values, how I can decrease these false positives and false negative. Because you can see that I'm getting true positive 104 right, right? So that, that basically means that the algorithm is doing a good job altogether, right? When when should we use downsampling and upsampling? I'll tell you just a second. After this, you are, you can see over here, right? I've written up sam under sampling, upsampling, downsampling, everything I've written. We'll discuss about this also. A lot of things are going to come. Okay, uh, guys, are you liking this particular video? Are you liking this particular video? Is it interesting? Are you able to understand? Is it good, guys? Yeah. Good. Amazing. So I don't know why this is taking so much time, but let it run. Okay. Okay, done. The execution is done. You can see over here. Now I'll try to execute this. Probably for you, it'll take more time. Now here is pretty much amazing. I told you, right? Decision tree. Okay, decision tree. Anything that you have with respect to decision tree, I think it gives you a better result. Now see, before you had 41, 47, right? In the false positive, you had 47 and in the false negative, you had 41. But now you just have six and you have 30. Now you have increased to 115, right? This is pretty much amazing, right? So that is why I am telling you that usually decision trees will not get much impact because now if I just do some kind of hyperparameter tuning on the random forest classifier, probably I'll be getting a very good value. And now see this amazing thing with respect to precision, it is somewhere around 95%. Amazing. F1 score 86%. Recall is somewhere around 0.79. It's okay. It's fine. Because when I do hyperparameter tuning on random forest classifier, I will definitely get a good result. Now you can see the power of decision trees. Now, many people, why they say that their favorite algorithm is random forest or XG boost or Adobe boost, probably XG boost, extreme gradient boosting may give you better results when compared to this. Okay. But the thing is that still <laughs> you should always try to do everything, you know, uh, always try to use all the techniques so that you get more and more knowledge. Okay. You get more and more knowledge. So this is about the random forest. Uh, so are you happy with this guy? See the macro average, this, this is somewhere around more than 90. That basically means you are getting a good one right here. I, I also did not apply any kind of cross validation. Just imagine if I apply cross validation and hyperparameter tuning, right? What will happen? Uh, yes. Now, uh, again, let's go to the next technique. Okay. So I hope everybody's clear with this. Can I get a quick head? Yes, hit the like guys, like ko tod do. Come on, we are getting some good, amazing results with the work that we did, right, till now. Sir, do you have a streaming schedule? It is always between seven to eight guys. And at night, 10.30. 
okay what what kind of problem this is recall based or precision based guys should you focus more on reducing false positive or false negative think over it okay think over it uh should you focus more on false positive or false negative that also you have to think it is a pretty good solution okay ml model like random forest have class widths do you use that okay let's let's try to use that also if you want okay so there will be something like class weight right so here you can see the class weight mm, what all values it can have there is something called as class weight and definitely you can use balance balance up sample right i mean things by default class weight is none i cannot say balanced okay i cannot say balanced probably let's see some example So this is an example of a random forest balance classifier. Okay, uh, I really want to see what all options we have with respect to balance decision tree classifier, max sample. Um, balance is the same as balance except the weights are computed based on the bootstrap sample of it. Mm, uh, pass through the movement model. Okay, just a second. I let me check it out. Okay, this is important. Random forest balanced balanced data. I'm just going to see the SK learn documentation, guys, probably, uh, and see what all values we can have. Okay, just give me a, a minute. Okay. Okay, guys, now what we can do is that for this class weights that you see, right? Okay. So this class weights that you see, we have to create something like this. Okay. So when we create something like this, then at that time, we can assign some kind of weights with respect to that. Now, if you see, if you see your X train, let's see what is the shape of my X train. Okay. So my X train dot shape, if I go and see my X train dot shape, it is something like this. But if I go and see my Y train dot, I hope there is something called as value underscore counts for series. You can see that it is something 347 in ones. And this is 119017. Now, suppose if I say for each point, for each point of one, right? If I say I will increase the class weight to, suppose if I say, if I increase the class weight to uh, 100 times, if it becomes 100 times, this will become 34700 uh, because 347 into 100. Okay, let me just say that. Okay, I'm going to increase this. Just a second. Okay, let me just uh, see the computation. So if I say that increase the class weights uh, by 50, so this will be somewhere uh, 17,350 if I say 100, right? It will be 347. Okay, let me just do one thing. Let me just increase the class weights of this. And to increase the class weight, I will just create a variable which is like this. Class weight is equal to, I will create a dictionary. And always remember guys, you have to create a dictionary. And in dictionary, you have to provide a key value pets. Now first is nothing but zero. You'll say that this is equal to one, okay? So that weight is equal to one, but when you're doing for one, probably you can increase the weight till hundred. Okay. So I'm actually doing this. So once I apply this and all I have to do is that apply this class weight over here inside my random forest classifier. So probably class weight is equal to class weight. And once I do fit, let, let this whole training happen. Now you'll be seeing some different, um, values altogether where I've actually defined class weight. Okay. I'm not using balanced, but instead I'm saying that for the first one, try to give it 100 times more importance when compared to the zero point. So now I think there should be some different values with respect to this and probably we'll be able to learn something from it. Okay. 
so let's see uh we'll just wait till then so did not understand class weight okay now what uh i can do is that i can explain you over here wait let me just open this notepad plus notepad now remember you have two classes zero and one okay now suppose in zero you have somewhere around 10000 records in one you have somewhere around 100 records okay now if you can tell random forest to give more importance on one instead of zero how to improve the importance right now when you take the balanced condition the random forest will be giving the importance same importance to both of them but if you say that now instead of just giving the importance importance basically means one is to one this is the importance equal importance that is 50 is to 50 right 100 is to 100 you are giving the importance same importance to both the classes but instead now what i have done is that i'll say that now if i change this to 1 colon 100 i'll be saying that for this first class give 100 times more importance than the zero because this is very very less number of points so probably we will be able to get a pretty much good result um, and this is why let's see what will happen i'm not sure how it will work with respect to this particular data set but you can see that okay this has got applied with class weights and this this now i will just execute this once again in another cell and probably we will try to see it okay so okay so now now you can actually see that even though i applied the class weights of 100 you know it was no use because just one prediction went wrong you know just one prediction went wrong so i think this is pretty much fine it is working properly with the balanced data set also right but in case if you have more number of records i think you can apply this kind of scenario with respect to class weights okay so this is with respect to the class weights guys okay everybody clear can i get a good go ahead hit the like button make it 200 guys 192 eight more come on end-to-end -end implementation i've already done it please check uh, my other things okay now guys uh, let's discuss about under sampling but i've given you this last solution always try to use this solution at the last okay before that, you can also do some more things, uh, which is also called as undersampling. Now, undersampling, I'm just going to show you an example. So this is basically an undersampling technique. In undersampling, I'm going to show you some important things with respect to this, how to perform undersampling. Um, what is exactly undersampling? Uh, that basically says, guys, uh, suppose uh, I have this kind of situation, okay? where I have zero 10,000 points and one I have 100 points, okay? What I can do is that by using undersampling, by using undersampling, I will try to reduce the points of the maximum labels, right? So for this particular labels, that is this zero, instead of 10,000, I'll say that, just try to make this particular points or reduce this points to 100 or it may be to 200 something like that okay just we'll try to reduce this points instead of uh instead of directly applying a machine learning algorithm what i'll do is that i'll just try to reduce this particular points and definitely there is a lot of disadvantage of using this so you should not use this because there is a loss of data uh probably we should only use this for scenarios where you have very less data set itself okay so let me show you how to do this okay now to perform under sampling as i told you please go and install the imb uh, imb learn data set uh, imb uh, under sampling so first of all i'm going to import the library which says imb learn dot uh, there is something called as under sampling right so there is something called as under sampling i'm going to import a parameter or a library which is called as near miss okay so near miss is the library that we are going to use and this near miss what i'm actually going to do is that i'm just going to apply this on my data set now before this if you really want to see uh what is my y train dot shape or value counts you can see over here if i go and see this you can see that this is what is the value now let me do one thing what i'll do is that instead of this zeros instead of this many records i will say that 
try to try to reduce by 75 percent uh, of this particular value so what i'll do is that i'll just use this near miss and probably the first parameter is something called as i think let's see the first parameter uh simple strategy and underscore neighbors verbos probably there should be something called as suppose if i give the first parameter as my ratio right so probably there may be ratio or i can also provide the ratio like this suppose i say that take only 25 percent uh, of the total parameters itself okay take the to 25 percent of the total parameters with respect to one uh, this is what i can do just a second guys i will just check it out whether i'm doing it correctly or not <laughs> okay uh fine so i'll i'll just say that okay make uh reduce it to somewhere around 80 percent okay and then i will say ns dot fit on probably my um or there is also something called as fit underscore sample because we need to sample it okay fit underscore sample and then here i'm actually going to take my x train and y train and probably this will be saved in variables like my new data set which is called as s train underscore near sample comma y train underscore near sample so if i'm actually using this so what i'm actually doing is that i'm actually doing the near miss now what will happen with this i'll just tell you guys just uh, give me a second uh probably i will also import one library this library actually counts the number of zeros and ones so i will be using this library from collections uh import counter okay now once i import this i'm just going to write print uh the number of class the number of class before okay before the number of class before uh before the fit okay and then i can use dot format i'll write dot format and here i'm actually going to use this counter parameter this counter does in short the value underscore counts so here i'm actually going to give my y train okay and similarly i'll just copy this and now i will print it with respect to y underscore train underscore uh, ns okay so this is what i'm actually printing and this will be after fit okay so in short you can see again over here guys if i go and see this counter y train if you really want to execute it over here right let me just execute this over here you'll be able to see that the number of zeros and ones zeros are somewhere around 199,000 and ones are 347 now if i apply a near missed or under sampling of 80 percent you'll be able to see this particular output so now after i applied i reduced these points by 80 percent right so what does this basically mean 80 by 100 right yeah, this is 80 by 100 uh, multiplied by let's see multiplied by 199017 so if i execute this uh sorry oops just a second is it 0.8 okay that no sorry this will be 0.2 of i guess 39000 still it did not reduce why okay okay point eight multiplied by three four seven is two seventy seven six point six two seventy seven point six plus three forty seven what is the answer six twenty four how did it come four twenty four thirty three i'm just trying to do the calculation am i wrong somewhere uh Point 0.8 okay point 0.8 I have actually taken it has come somewhere around okay point zero zero eight multiplied by 80 of are you saying point 0.8 multiplied by 433 oh yeah so this is right guys i think uh, what you are saying is absolutely right 0 0.8 of 433 so of this particular value of ones i am actually getting the 0 0.8 uh, 
uh, of this particular value, right? So this should be the point eight or eighty percentage of this particular value. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. Perfect. Fine, guys. So that was the mistake that I made. I'm probably I have not revised for many days, so because of that I forgot. But this eighty percent is with respect to, uh, you know, this plus the eighty percent of this. So basically, what I'm saying is that eighty percent of this particular value is equal to this. Now what I'll do is that I will do a uh, train and fit with my random forest. Okay. Now remember over here, guys. Obviously, this is not going to give me a good result because obviously for obvious reasons because the data set is not enough, right? Data set is very very less. When I do this, and you can see my random forest classifier has got created. I've just copied and pasted over here, right? Right, and then I'm actually going to print this one. So once I print it, probably this will be having a very bad accuracy. You can see over here, guys. This precision is gone. <laughs> precision is gone. You can see so many errors, right, with respect to your test data set. So definitely don't never do un under sampling unless and until your data set is very very less. But you can definitely use this near miss parameter and try to do it, right? Which is better, over or under sampling? According to me, over sampling only will be better. But let's see. At the end of the day, let me give you a final solution, guys. Random forest is better. Okay. When compared to over sampling, under sampling, or uh, smart, right? <laughs> that is what. But again, we should do it, and we should try to understand. You know, so that will be always handy and useful. Okay, guys, let's do with the respect to over sampling. Now, with over sampling, the method is pretty much simple. We will be using. the same library and now we will try to import this from from imb learn dot over sampling i'm going to import the random over sampler okay so this is basically used for this and how does random over sampler work again i'll just be copying and pasting some of the things from the top same la way guys i'll just execute this like this okay i will paste it over here i'll say os os means over sampler and probably i'll be using random sampler random over sampler now if i say that 50% okay just to give an example guys i'm just writing it as 50% let me make it as os and probably this all will be same and i think it should work now if i print it now you can see that initially my classes were this much right and this one in over sampling what we do is that whichever class is having the less number of values we are going to impute and increase those values right so in this particular case now you have seen that this 347 has been increased and the total value is basically the 50 percentage of this particular value right now i have done this over sampling over sampling we have basically added more points with respect to this one value okay and uh, probably the near points or the same points or on top of that more points has been added so if i try to now do uh, this one uh, that is this classifier and probably let's see if i try to do this sorry if i try to apply the random forest classifier you will be able to see that now it is basically happening on this x train underscore ns y train underscore ns whatever i have actually created over here right yes 0 to 50 its ratio yeah now here you can see 1190 one, 199017 divided by 2 is nothing but this particular value that is why i have taken 50 if you can also you, you can also take 7.75 okay so when we are getting high recall value the precision value decreases along with the f1 score we can also fix that issue also i guess so which is better near miss or smart near miss is just for under sampling guys don't do under sampling you will be losing a huge amount of data is everyone clear guys are you able to understand can you give me a go ahead like thumbs up something how is the josh hi do you want to say hi low <laughs> say something ah oh.
under sampling screen so this is the under sampling screen all the code will be given uh saurav sinha says in one of my interview interviewer asked me to handle imbalanced data set now you say that if the data set is small i'll definitely go with under sampling but again i will be focusing on all the performance metrics like recall uh, precision uh, f1 score apart from that i will also be focusing based on the domain knowledge whether i should be reducing the false positive or the false negative based on that i'll be selecting my roc score uh, that is the probability value like what it's whether it should be 0 0.6 0 0.7 something like that finally i will also be doing smooth techniques i will be doing over sampling techniques but again i will be always involving around understanding the performance metrics finally if this is not working i'll go with ensemble techniques like decision like random forest xg boost where i can also provide my class weight parameters probably then it will perform well see i have given you the complete answer okay so this is done let me execute this Oh guys you can see that it has reduced right <laughs> by seeing by doing the oversampling you can see now i have reduced the false negative my false positive is that much only but just imagine just by increasing this you know by doing the random oversampler i was able to reduce this isn't it amazing guys now just imagine if i make this to 0.75 probably this will improve more better uh chris try to use nape by generative model without any under or over sampling yes i will come to that uh, shejada that is also one way see there are various list of things but i am actually trying to show you something which you will be able to achieve it quickly okay but that uh, what you are talking about nape bias that will also work okay so let me just do with re respect to random over sampler i'll try to improve it to 0.75 and let me just train it once again Yes, uh, RTX Titanic RTX uh, review will probably come tomorrow. I'll be doing that review. Coming, guys, coming. We'll go one by one. Okay, let's see whether with the help of over sampling we are able to increase the accuracy or not. will over sampling lead to overfitting no no this is overfitting this is with respect to your test data output no guys right in test data you are seeing that you are getting a good true negatives to uh, false or true positives right you are getting all this particular values properly this is your true negative this is your true positive okay dude i need to practice my skills before i can start understanding this live stream see guys i'm i'm coding it in front of you i'm not i'm writing each and every line of code in front of you so that you don't feel that i'm just teaching from somewhere else right this is important this is how we learn right i'm showing you an example i have not executed this i'm executing it in front of you if i face some error i will face if i if i don't know something i'll ask you all guys there are many things that are going to come with respect to imbalanced data set let's discuss part by part right now just focus on the things that i'm actually discussing prince hira what is your question sir it shows me validated data attribute error what shows you validated data attribute error what what is the error which line you are getting an error say tell me that whether you are getting the error over here or whether you are getting the error over here which line are you getting the error right now you can see that it has got executed again prince hira is saying uh, it shows me valid data attribute which line are you getting the error tell me that which line out of this which line you are getting the error when i am fitting do one thing create a new environment create a new environment and try to execute all the code over there okay data set is over here guys uh, uh, credit card uh, uh, credit card fraud prince hira again i am telling you please create a new environment 
I think it should not give an error because everybody is executing, right? Okay, um, this is done. Uh, let me just see the accuracy. I, as I told you, the accuracy is pretty much better when compared to the previous one. Okay, now guys, uh, the next step uh, is with respect to oversampling. Oversampling has performed well. Definitely, if I perform some kind of hyperparameter tuning, we will be able to uh, do a whole lot of things. Okay. Now coming to the next technique, um, let's see what is the next technique uh, that I have listed in my notes. Um, smart, yes, the smart technique. Smart, smart, smart. Okay, guys. So uh, here I am going to use a technique which is called as smart tomic. Okay. Smotomic technique uh, I'm actually going to use over here and uh, first of all I will be importing same imb learn dot compute okay sorry not dot compute dot combine okay I'm going to import the smart smart tomic yes smart tomic smart tomic okay so this particular library I'm actually going to use uh, and the one thing that I really want to do uh, let me do one thing guys let me just copy this whole thing the same whole thing just try to copy it okay just try to execute it uh, instead of here you just write smart smart tomic then os dot fit sample on x train and y train so instead of uh, making as 0.75, let's see what are the parameters of Smotomic. Okay, Smotomic also tells you to give uh, the class emblem under sampling objects. Okay, so guys, Smotomic uses the combination of both uh, under sampling and over sampling over here. Uh, here are uh, two specific parameters that you can actually give. Okay, one is uh, one is about Let's see. Okay. One, one, I think this is the parameter. Okay. Suppose here, if I give uh, the smart value as or the smart uh, or the ratio value as 0 0.5 and suppose my K is there. Okay. Let me just see all the parameters guys. I think I'm getting confused with respect to the parameters and this is at all not looking good. Let me make more cells insert cell below insert cell below insert cell below okay so that I, I i'm not able to see the parameters also so over here we have smart random state over sampling uses smart cleaning uh -huh. sampling strategy okay this is fine random state smart uh smart the class i'm going to object to use if not given a class object will default parameters will be given okay fine this i really want to set it as default okay let me let me just set it as default and let's see so i've given as 0.5 let's see right now we will just see based on the output that we are getting okay so probably then we'll be able to understand some things from it now here you can actually see guys uh smart techniques what it does is that when we are giving as 0.5 Let's see whether, uh, okay, I really want to see this smart IMB learn. I'm not able to see the parameters completely. Over here, probably we'll have to see the documentation, you know? Documentation, okay, this is one example. Original data set was this one, right? And we had made it to equal. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, now, if you don't know about Smart Tomek, what it does is that it creates it creates new points, new points 
of the lowest number suppose this is my one is actually happening uh, having somewhere around 347 counts right so it will go and create more number of points and probably it will be creating near around that particular location it will be creating a new points okay new points altogether so here i've actually given 50 percent instead what i'll do is that i'll try to give 75 percent and probably it will be increasing that particular value will be increasing to 75 percent itself and remember guys this usually takes more time when compared to um over sampling in over sampling on the same dot the same points will be created but here based on the nearest points more number of points will get created okay so probably here you can see that i have this many points now what i'll do is that i will try to run this all okay i'll try to run this all and here it is i'm running this all uh and then what i'll do is that i will also try to see my predictions right okay so i hope everybody understood about smart guys ensemble techniques prevents imbalanced data set right see ensemble techniques basically means if decision trees are getting used they use a hierarchy okay they use a hierarchy to basically do it Okay. Clear everyone? Perfect. So guys clear everyone? I don't know what is the problem with boogie boogie. He's just spamming. I'm, I'm hiding that user for some time. Can you make a sessions on working with large data sets, uh, sampling techniques, etc. Sure, I will try to do it. Okay, first let's focus on this. Let's run all these things. Let's learn these things itself, right? So, guys, did you understand all these things? Please do let me know. Here, what we have done is that we have just created some more points, right? And probably this will take some point, some time to run. Let it run till then, okay? uh let it run till then till then i will be focusing on the ensemble examples also uh Oh, so before EDA, we need to apply oversampling and understand or during feature engineering. No, oversampling, undersampling should be applied during the model creation, you know. During the model creation. Because you need to verify that, you know. So do you have a tutorial on hyperparameter tuning? Yes, I have already made that in my live project playlist. So guys, it is taking some time to run. We'll wait till then. How is it? How difficult after doing using a set the threshold? Yes. Uh, how difficult is it to get a bronze in Kaggle? It is up to you guys. If you are able to get good ranks, you'll be getting it. Okay. How it creates synthetic data in smoting? What it does is that based on the nearest neighbor, it will try to compute a new point. Okay, and probably there is a very good research paper on the same. I'd like to suggest that research paper to you all uh, because it is pretty much important. Okay, let me just show you the research paper. If you really want to see the research paper, I think uh, it was somewhere here only. Just go and see guys. There is a very good research paper on this one, like how the comp points are actually created and all. Okay. So all the methods, all the techniques are actually also given over here. 
okay guys it, it has executed successfully let's see whether this will increase or decrease okay now you can see that it has still performed better than the previous one i guess what was the previous one it was 27 6 this was 118 okay now you can see that uh we are actually getting some better values right previously if you go and see this was 27 and this was 6 now this has become 23 but this has increased but definitely this has also increased right when compared to the this one that basically means some of the points that were here has got misclassified in another way right but definitely if we perform hyperparameter tuning we will be definitely looking onto this now you can see that we are getting a good precision recall and f1 support right f1 score values so this is what you can do with smart tomek also it actually creates new points altogether okay and new points is based on uh, the nearest neighbors that are actually involved over there the similar points that is there itself and there is a very good research paper that has been given regarding how you can actually understand about this and how the points are actually created in some data sets moat is not working uh, which kind of data set santosh kumar just tell me i'll try to uh, explore that too also okay okay now guys uh, last technique uh, for today's class we are going to discuss is something called as ensemble techniques okay and when i say ensemble techniques in imb learn is also there is there so uh, krishna please answer in your interview question you asked one question if you have images of different size how do you handle so uh, this one i am going to create a practical video in my pytorch playlist which i am actually coming up right now and probably you'll be able to see from there okay so uh, can you tell which are tp fp t and fn okay now guys this is basically my this this is basically my true negative okay negative basically means zeros okay this is values are my true positive this is my, these are values my false positive and these are false negative okay just imagine here you have zero one zero one okay out of this okay now we are going to the ensemble techniques uh, i hope everybody is clear with this in ensemble techniques again this is actually present inside the library imb learn again so i'm going to say import uh, oh sorry from imb learn dot ensemble import there is something called as easy ensemble i think easy ensemble classifier okay so this is the easy ensemble classifier that i'm actually going to use and uh, probably i'll be taking the same example over here so let me just write easy is equal to easy ensemble classifier if i press shift tab i think this will also be working warm start uh, this algorithm is known as easy ensemble uh, the classifier is an ensemble or boost learner trained on different balancing bootstrap samples okay so this internally handles all these things so what i can write is that i can write easy dot fit on your x train comma y train right so once this fitting happens okay this fit has already happened and probably we can test it for our test data set right so here it is uh, i'm just going to say easy over here and let's see what value i get over here okay it is taking some time to do the prediction okay this is actually giving a bad results but i think we can also play with some kind of parameters here let me see the parameters that are available here okay parameters 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 okay let me do one thing fit this tab is not playing over here easy dot fit i think we have to play with this parameters i guess i am not sure but i 
thing wong star sampling strategy what is sampling strategy okay okay guys i'll just have a look onto this easy ensemble classifier i think probably we are not getting that good results so i will just remove it right now okay but i'll explore and probably come in my next lesson that is tomorrow you know probably come with a good solution that how to work with this ensemble techniques but apart from that i think i have covered most of the things uh i still have one more thing called as isolation forest but i think it is almost time okay so isolation forest can be discussed tomorrow um okay isolation forest i uh, uh, i have to explore that also with respect to the imbalanced data set okay so yes guys so this was all about this particular video i hope you like it now one thing that i really want to do is that i really want to upload this imbalanced 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 handling imbalanced okay handling imbalanced handling imbalanced i'll just upload it in my github and probably do you want me to create a new repository or just add it in the old repository um i think i had one repository i guess okay imbalance imbalance is there something with respect to handle imbalance okay i'm going to put it inside this particular repository i think i had uploaded some videos before okay let me see where it is and then i'll be uploading over here right so i'll give this github link everyone in this particular video itself so make sure that you just reload the page just reload the page guys just reload the page everyone the github link is available in the dashboard in the dashboard okay the github link is basically available in the dashboard everyone uh dashboard i'm saying sorry <laughs> in the description of this particular video okay is your docker playlist complete yes docker playlist is completed only i have to just put some more videos on kubernetes it is complete guys i'll try to upload some more with respect to nlp and all okay okay guys so just reload the page and let me know whether you are able to see this particular file okay just give me a thumbs up if you are able to see that particular file just reload the page everyone please do reload the page once please find our github link is present or not just give me a confirmation no please so dl playlist is it complete no uh, there are many videos that are going to come on dl very soon yeah perfect now hit the like button guys if you like this particular video and again tomorrow will be coming up 10:30 again i'll be coming and playing some games in my another channel the link of the channel is given in the description the channel name is krish nayak vlogs so if you have any questions related to data science you can come there also okay so thank you all uh, for for this amazing session i hope i was able to teach you well and thank you for being so patient and understanding all these things right so yes uh, if you have anything as such you can come to the live session that i take at 10:30 and again we will be doing a whole lot of things there also so thank you all for attending this particular session i hope you like it okay so thank you guys please do hit the like button please do subscribe my channel if you are not a subscribed i'll see you in tomorrow's video okay thank you guys bye bye have a great day bye bye thank you